Lipids are a class of biological molecules that are predominantly characterized by their inability to interact with water. So your lipids are going to be things like fats and oils and a few other structures that are largely nonpolar. Unlike other biological molecules, lipids are not considered to be true polymers. Our other molecules, carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids, are long chains of individual monomers. Lipids are actually smaller molecules that are made up of a few specific components. They are not chains, although they are made in a similar fashion using dehydration reactions. Lipids are predominantly made up of hydrogen and carbon. Because of this, they are nonpolar. Remember that carbon to carbon and carbon to hydrogen bonds are nonpolar bonds. So that makes the whole molecule, or at least a very large part of it, nonpolar and therefore insoluble in water. Some examples of lipids are fats. You are probably very familiar with these from our diet. Uh, phospholipids. Steroids and waxes. Included in with those fats are also going to be oils. The main function of fats are energy storage. Fats are much more compact than carbohydrates are, and this is especially important for animals who have to move their energy around. Plants can stay still, in fact they do stay still, so they don't really need to worry about how large their molecules are. But fats provide a really dense energy storage for animals. The main characteristic of fats is that they are long chains of carbon and hydrogen. Within those long chains of carbon, we have very high energy carbon bonds. And so those carbon to carbon bonds are where we store molecular energy. So contained in a chain of carbons, you have a huge amount of energy storage capability. Fats are also called triglycerides or triacylglycerols because the two main components are a glycerol molecule and three fatty acid chains. Fatty acid chains are long chains of carbon to carbon bonds. <clears throat> Our glycerol is a three carbon molecule with three hydroxyl groups on it. And each of our fatty acids is made up of a carboxyl group connected to a long chain of carbon molecules. These are written in a shorthand that tells you that there is um, a carbon here plus 15 more, so 16 carbons, and then a 17th on the end. Just like all of our other biological molecules, fats are linked together by a dehydration reaction. Although they're not long chains of molecules, each one of these fatty acids is going to be linked to the glycerol molecule. <clears throat> Excuse me. When that happens, we release an H2O from each one, and the result is a bond here between our carboxyl group and our hydroxyl group. There are two types of fatty acids. One is a saturated fatty acid. Saturated fatty acids have all carbons linked by double bonds. They produce a linear structure with no kinks or bends. 
saturated fatty acids tend to be solid at room temp. Now this is because they are straight. When they're straight, they can pack together tightly. Saturated fatty acids tend to be animal fats. So if you think about the fat on a piece of beef or on a piece of bacon, and even if you cook that bacon and you render out the fat, that fat will harden just sitting in the pan at room temperature. Now saturated fatty acids can be really bad for your health. A diet that's really high in saturated fatty acids can lead to the buildup of these fatty acids in your veins and in your arteries. So that's why it is generally considered unhealthy to have a diet that is solely based or largely based on animal fats, where you're getting these saturated fatty acids because of course they pack in and they're also solid at a higher temperature. Our other type of fatty acid is an unsaturated fatty acid. An unsaturated fatty acid contains one or more double bonds. When you have a carbon to carbon double bond in your fatty acid tail, it produces a kink in that tail. If you recall from the previous slide, this tail was completely straight. But when we introduce that double to, excuse me, double carbon to carbon bond, it puts a bend in it. And these guys tend to be liquid at room temperature. The reason for that is that this kink keeps those molecules from packing together really tightly. And so it's harder for them to solidify. It takes a cooler temperature for them to solidify. These unsaturated fats are also known as oils. So you might know this as olive oil, uh, peanut oil, and many of our other plant-based fats. There are two types of unsaturated fatty acids. Monounsaturated fatty acids contain only one carbon to carbon double bond, whereas polyunsaturated fats contain two or more double bonds. So our fatty acid molecules are fats, our triacylglycerols, were made up of a glycerol and two fatty acids. A very closely related molecule is a phospholipid. A phospholipid is made up of the same glycerol molecule. This time it has only two fatty acid tails and the remaining carbon in that glycerol is attached to a phosphate head. This structure has a super important function in living organisms. Phospholipids are amphipathic. If you remember from chapter two, amphipathic means that it has um, on one part of its structure, a hydrophobic region, and on the other side of the structure, it has a hydrophilic region. The fatty acid tail is going to be your hydrophobic region. And the phosphate head is going to be your hydrophilic region. Now that's because that fatty acid tail is a chain of carbon to carbon bonds, which makes it nonpolar. The hydrophilic region is a phosphate group. And if you'll recall from part one video, a phosphate group is a phosphate attached to four oxygens. This is a really electronegative molecule. It also acts as an acid, so there's a strong negative charge on this end, making it hydrophilic. Phospholipids are really important because they are the main structural component of our plasma membrane. 
So here we've got a molecular structure of the phospholipid corresponding to the diagram in the previous one. So we've got our phosphate head, which is this part here. We've got our glycerol backbone, and then we've got our fatty acid tails. So you can see that hydrocarbon ring, I'm sorry, hydrocarbon region, and then up here, we've got this very polar, very negative region of our phospholipid. Going back to the idea of structure and function, with this hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail, these phospholipids will orient themselves in a particular manner because they interact with water. <clears throat> they form the basis of the plasma membrane by lining up as a bilayer with their hydrophilic heads oriented to the region outside of this cell and towards the inside. So you'll notice there's a layer of heads here. One side would be the outside of the cell, the other side would be the inside of the cell. In the center is that hydrophobic region. So those tails orient themselves away from water. Now this is really important because it provides a barrier to the environment. By lining up as that bilayer, it can exclude things from moving in and out of the cell, sort of isolating the inside cellular functions from the rest of the environment. In chapter five, we will talk very extensively about the plasma membrane and why phospholipids are so important there. Another one of our important lipids are steroids. Steroids are slightly different. They're not made of a glycerol and fatty acid tails. They are actually four interconnected rings of carbon. Steroid molecules are often some form of cholesterol. Cholesterol is another important biological molecule you've probably heard of. Cholesterol acts as a precursor to hormones such as estrogen and testosterone. Cholesterol is also important in the fluidity of the plasma membrane. Again, we'll talk about that when we get to chapter five. But like all other lipids, steroids are going to be insoluble in water because they are nonpolar. They are made up of four carbon and hydrogen rings and attached to those carbon hydrogen rings are a variety of functional groups that provide them with a specific function in the organism. One example of um, the difference in functional groups is estrogen and testosterone. Estrogen and testosterone are hormones that provide male and female characteristics. There's only one functional group that is different between the two. They both have uh, cholesterol as their basis and then just have slightly modified functional groups to produce very different functions in the living organism. Our last type of lipids are waxes. So waxes are special types of lipids that prevent water loss in organisms. So when you feel a plant leaf, um, that's kind of waxy or earwax. All of those are special modified fat molecules that are acting as a barrier. And their function is to exclude or protect, exclude water from a cell, protect an organism from a cell. And they do this because they are lipids, because they are very nonpolar. So their function is to protect organisms from water loss or alternatively to provide structural elements. So a couple of examples here. We've got beeswax. The structure of the honeycomb is actually made out of wax. 
it is not a solid structure like you might think of in a plant. Um, it's actually very soft. If you push on it too hard, you're going to crush that honeycomb. Um, the outer covering of many plants, also called the cuticle, um, is also covered in uh, waxy substances that help to repel water. They also reduce water loss. So um, they keep, can keep water in, they can also keep water out. Another example is earwax. So earwax occurs in your ear canal. Here's your ear, here's your inner ear, and inside that canal you'll get a waxy buildup. That waxy buildup is gonna help protect your ear from getting too much water in it, from getting dirt in it, and other bacteria, other things like bacteria.